Hi, I'm Doug McKinley and you're watching Adorama TV. In today's video, we'll be critiquing some viewer images and I'll even throw one of mine into the mix as well. Adorama TV presents Stay Focused with Doug McKinley. This is part two of a two-part series on critiquing your images. Hopefully with this exercise, we can visually show how a crit works and how it can help improve your pictures. Okay, let's get started by using the guidelines we mentioned in part one. First up, we're gonna look at Alex Sarna's image. Thanks, Alex, for sending it in. So number one, how does the technical quality stack up? Is the image in focus? From what I can see, our central subject in the center of the frame is sharp. Well done. How's the exposure? For me, it's just slightly overexposed. I might have brought that down a little bit. I can see it had been used fill-in flash to fill up any kind of shadows and holes. I might have backed the light off a little bit in the flash just to give it a little more texture. What about the depth of field? Is it engaging? What I can see, and I'm only guessing here, it looks like to me about f5.6 for an aperture. So the background is a bit blurred, but I still find it a little bit uh, annoying. It's drawn my eye to it. So what I would probably do there is maybe go down to f4 or f2.8 just to really wash that background out and really focus on your subject. Contrast, how's the contrast? It's a bit flat. So it's, it's the fill flash again, it's flattening the image out. I might have added a little more uh, shadow detail. And how's the lighting? Again, we're using that flash. You gotta really start to control that flash too much and it looks like it's washed out. Too little and you start getting shadows where you don't want them just right and you get a nice image. Colors look fine. Uh, there's not a lot of color in the image but the colors that are there look good. Now what about the post-processing? Looks good, nothing too overly bad about this. I just think that maybe just bringing that light down just a little bit might add a little more uh, to the picture. So number two, how's the composition? What's the framing like? Well, it's a reportage style picture, so sometimes you get what you get in these kind of images, but the subject on the right, where we've got these disembodied hands coming into the frame, I find that a little bit uh, unusual. I'd rather see more of the body of that person. So I might have shifted my shooting position off to the right a little bit to try and get more of that person in the frame. What is your eye drawn to? What element holds the most visual weight? Well, fortunately, it's the central figure. Now, I think she's a very uh, good subject. The only thing here I'd want to see is I want to see her looking at the camera. You, know, you want to see those big eyes looking right at the lens. Now, what you could do here is just make a little noise, say hello, say hi, just to get them to look up then you take your picture. Number three, how's the emotional appeal? Does it have any emotion? Well, it's, it looks like a wedding to me, so automatically you're thinking, you're thinking party, you're thinking you know, people are happy, you're thinking uh, family. So there is a certain emotional de development here, and I want to see that uh, continue with other pictures. I'd want to see a whole series of these images. Does your uh, subject look relaxed? Um, somewhat. Again, I'd want to see uh, the subject engaging more with the photographer, meaning looking into the camera. So the photographer's got to move around a little more, get a different point of view. Is it telling a story? Yes, this is telling a story, a really good story. It's telling me that this woman is getting ready for a wedding, I'm assuming. So I'm already thinking, oh, what's, what's the next picture gonna look like? You know, I want to see a whole series of pictures. I want to see the story laid out in front of me. So Alex, I think it's a really good image. I think it's very, very, Small things you might be able to improve here. Maybe reposition yourself uh, in terms of where you're standing. Um, watch that light, it's a bit too heavy, I think. Keep in mind your depth of field. Uh, keep in mind those backgrounds, because one thing I've found over the years is once you've got your foreground image, your subject, that's the easy part. It's those backgrounds that can really throw a picture off. So watch your backgrounds. Next up, we're gonna look at Maddie Field's image. Thanks, Maddie. Again, we're gonna go back to the rules. Number one, how does it technically stack up? Is the image in focus? It's a landscape shot. It looks nicely focused from foreground to background. So her depth of field, I would, I'm only guessing, but I'm thinking F11. So it's a really nicely uh, sharp image from foreground to background. How's the contrast? Is it too muddy or too contrasty? Now this is a difficult shot because she's got light coming through the trees. That dappled light's always really hard to get the contrast right. I think she's done a good job here. Um, it's one of those tricky pictures that sometimes you might have to take three or four or five shots just to try and get it right, adjusting in camera as you go. 
Light, how's the lighting handled? Again, it's a tricky shot with that dapper light coming from the side a little bit. I think she's done a really good job here. How's the, uh, the post-production? Again, looks good. I can't see any real big faults here. Um, it's a tough one to do. Uh, it's, really, it's the kind of image that you can really easily over-process. So I think it's done well. How's the composition? It's nice. It's a nicely framed image. You've got leading lines with the road pulling you into the background of the frame. You've got these trees on either side of the, of the road. It's again, pulling my, the viewer into the shot. Now, are there things in there that shouldn't be there or things left out? What I'm seeing is the picture, the stuff that's in the picture should be there, but there's something missing. So when I'm looking for the visual weight of the, of the picture, what is the visual weight here? I want something on that road. And that's what's missing. It's looking a little lonely, that road. You know, you need something, a human element, an animal, a person, something there to draw the viewer into the center of that frame. Because at the moment, all I'm looking at is an empty road. I think the, the uh, composition is really well done. I think the lighting is really well done. It's just lacking something. And that lack, that what it's lacking is something in, on that road. In my mind's eye, I'm seeing two people walking down that road. Or a farmer, a horse and cart, something like that. Something that's going to give me uh, an idea of where this image is. So at the moment, it, it lacks just a little bit of emotional appeal, but it's easily fixed to think about this stuff. Now there's no people in the shot, so we're not gonna worry about too much about, uh, about that. Um, does it tell a story? It tells a story in the sense that it looks like it's in the country, but because we're lacking that central figure in the middle, the story gets lost. Thanks for sending it in. So our third image is from Justin Ray. Thanks, Justin, for sending it in. Again, we're gonna look at the image, uh, stacking it up with our, uh, our three rules. So number one, how does it technically stack up? Is the image in focus? Yes, and it looks to me like uh, he's used a fairly small aperture here. I'm guessing about F11, so I'm seeing focus from foreground to background, from the little pebbles in the front to the mountains and clouds in the back. What about the control of the depth of field? Well, as I just said, we've got this great depth of field because he's used a small, small aperture, giving us that great landscape-y kind of feel. The use of contrast, too muddy or too much contrast. Definitely too much contrast here. Now, I think it's a product of shooting at the wrong time of day. Um, I think that uh, this picture really calls out for a, an early morning uh, time frame or a, or a later afternoon time frame. Midday with landscape pictures are always tough. Colors, colors are a little bit heavy. Okay, now this comes to the, comes to the last point of this, uh, this, this rule is the post-processing. It's too much. It's got a really heavy hand in the, in the post here. You need to really back that off. It looks to me like with the uh, sky and the white clouds, either you've uh, used your polarizer too much or you've tried to polarize it in the computer. If that's the case, don't do it in the computer. It's better to actually have the filter on your lens. It's just much more control in it. Uh, next up, number two, uh, how's the composition? Overall, it's pretty good. Um, I like, I do like the clouds. Um, the, 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 the horizon line on the lake, maybe a bit too much in the middle of the frame. Could have pushed that up a little bit or brought it down, probably pushed it up a little bit. But the one thing that's really sort of catching my eye is that uh, the visual weight, the main sort of focus of your image are the canoes. Now, I see to the one on the right has been cut off. I want to see them all. So right away, my eye is being drawn to that last canoe that's cut off. Every time I look at the picture, I want to look, I want to look over to the right. Easily fixed, uh, take a few steps to your right, make sure all the elements of your, your canoes are in the shot, recompose a little bit, push your horizon line up a little bit, and then take a picture. But it's a time of day thing. I really think that shooting midday, midday uh, um, landscapes are tough, really, really difficult. Um, so I would think about trying to get this image or similar images added in the morning or the afternoon. Number three, is, the, is there an emotional appeal? Now, to me there is, because I absolutely love mountains. I grew up in the mountains. So when I see pictures of mountains, I'm automatically thinking, wow. So I want to see this picture work, you know, and I think that uh, that over-processing and uh, not getting your canoe in the shot is really detracting from the, from the emotion of the picture. I want to see the emotion really stand out. So just reconfigure your, configure your, your, uh, your positioning and think about those times of days. There's no people in this shot, so we don't have to worry about, worry about that too much. Does it tell a story? 
it almost tells a story. Now, the story would be better if we got the whole canoe in the shot, but it is telling me summertime, outdoors, you know, fitness, uh, the great outdoors is fantastic. So, but just think about your framing, think about that over-processing, think about the times of day. I like the picture, it just needs a little bit of work. Finally, let's look at one of my pictures. I'm not above being critiqued. Again, we'll go through the rules. So number one, how does it stack up technically? Is the image in focus? It is in focus, because I made sure it's in focus. How's the depth of field? Well, it's a fairly overcast day. There's a bit of snow happening here, but I managed to get um, an F8-ish uh, out of the lens, so I'm pretty sharp from foreground to background. Next up, how's the contrast? It's a bit subdued because the because of the weather, the snowy overcast day. A little bit difficult to try and get this right, so it was a little playing around with it in the computer. How's the colors look? Well, it's slightly blue because there's a lot of blue light, so I had to back that off a little bit in the computer. Now, is there a heavy hand in post processing? I like to think not. Um, it took me a little while to get this picture, the colors right, to get the exposure right in the computer. Next up, how's the composition? What's the framing like? Well, frankly, I think it's a little off. I look at the picture and I see in the top left hand corner, a sort of big open area. Maybe I should have swung the camera a little to the right and taken that right out. What's your eye drawn to? Where is the visual weight? For me, it's the ice. This is the St. Lawrence River in Canada and it's breaking up in the springtime. It's given this really great mosaic pattern. It really draws my eye to it. I think it works really well. So number three, how is the emotional appeal? Now, as a guy who grew up in Canada in wintry conditions, it, it means a lot to me, this picture. I like it. I like that the way it makes me want to be there. It's got this sense of drawing me into the shot. It reminds me of why I was there. Now, there's no people in the shot, so we're not going to worry about that. Does it tell a story? It does. It tells me a story of a natural uh, happening every spring with the St. Lawrence Seaway, one of the biggest seaways in the world. It gets frozen over in the wintertime and it breaks up every spring. It tells me about what's happening in this area of the world. Thanks, and until next time, you've been watching Adorama TV and I'm Doug McKinley. I want to thank everyone for sending in their pictures. It's a very brave thing to do. Don't forget, you can also subscribe to Adorama TV for more great videos. And we really want to know what you think, so send us your comments or like and share this video. You can also check out the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find more great tips and tricks.